In this episode of The Mind Pulp. So for the first 41 minutes, we talk about uh, current events. We talk about our lives. We have a lot of fun. And then after that, we get into the fitness stuff where we answer fitness questions from listeners. We fit in the fitness, Sal. From listeners like you who post questions on our Mind Pump Media Instagram page. By the way, if you ever want to ask us a question that we'll answer, make sure you go to the Mind Pump Media page to do so. It's under the qua uh, picture. There. Le qua. That's it. So here's what we talked about for the first 41 minutes, which is the intro portion of this episode. We started out by talking about breakfast cereals, our favorite breakfast cereals, the ones we ate when we were kids and the ones that made Justin fat. Hey, nothing. <laughs> Diabetes is real. <laughs> then, we talked about, then we talked about Adam's trip to the beach again. I think that's like the seventh time you've gone to the you beach this week. beach bum. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm we, broke now. Then we talked about the differences between grass-fed meat and grain-fed meat. Uh, the fatty acid difference, conjugated linoleic acid, much higher in grass-fed meat, and that has performance-enhancing and fat loss benefits. In fact, a lot of people supplement with CLA. Now, our favorite source of grass-fed meat is ButcherBox. Now, ButcherBox delivers grass-fed meats to your door. Oh, and by the way, right now, if you sign up for ButcherBox delivery, you get ground beef forever for yeah. life. Yeah. That's crazy. That's a All crazy the promotion. All beef you could ever want. Anyway, here's what you do to get the discount uh, to get that promotion. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump um, to sign up. And it's between August 22nd and September 29th to get ground beef for life. Oh, and also you get $20 off your first box. I think they're just giving it away. Yeah. Then I talked about how my eyes are bigger than my stomach when I eat sushi every single time. We talk about the biggest losers, new trainers. Congratulations to Erica Fitlove, our friend. Do, 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 do. We talked about uh, sugar babies. Apparently, that's a new profession uh, that uh, Doug is going to be uh, looking into. <laughs> and he we, just signed up. And then we talked about the guy who used the drone to drop bombs on his ex-girlfriend. Oh, my God. Ah, that's you a, just ruined it for everybody. That's a common idea we've all had, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Then we get into the fitness portion of this episode. The first question, uh, how can you create an efficient 30-minute workout when you're training a client only once a week? Is it possible? If so, what's that look like? Next question, is fasting a good idea when you're trying to lose weight? Back in the day, we called that not eating. Yeah. The next question, if all other attempts to aid in better sleep result in no luck, how about melatonin? Is it safe? What if you cycle it on and off? And the final question, what would each of us say is the it factor to become a successful personal trainer? You gotta be sexy, so. Also, 72. You know what that number represents, Justin? Well, 72? The amount of hours left for the MAPS starter oh my God, promotion. That. Not your prime age of women, yeah. but the actual uh, <laughs> the hours left till the sale is over. I love them silvers. <laughs> There's only three days left before the MAPS starter 50% off sale is over. Now, Map Starter is the fitness program I'll designed for beginners and people who haven't worked out in a long time. So if you want to get started with the resistance training, but you don't know how, you need some guidance, get Maps Starter. By the way, you don't need a gym to do this program. All you need are a pair of dumbbells and a physio ball. So you can do it in your living room right in front of your computer where you watch our models demonstrating the exercises and follow our workouts. It's all planned out for you. No teeth tonight, Gladys. It's also a great gift for friends and family members uh, that you want to get started in resistance training. Um, so it's a great gift for those beginners in your friend, that, in your family and your friends who need to start lifting weights and working out. All right, so here's how you get the discount. Go to mapsstarter.com, M-A-P-S-S-T-A-R-T-E-R.com, and use the code STARTER50, S-T-A-R-T-E-R-5-0, no space, for the discount. You know what I did the other day? I was at the grocery store, and I was walking through the um, – I never walk through the cereal aisle. You guys ever watch, walk through the cereal aisle? Just yeah, to pay attention? of course. <laughs> Am I supposed to be a part of this? You're on this conversation. <laughs> okay. Uh, cereal aisle. Yes, I'm, I'm with you. I, it, when's the last time you had like, a, like one of the, the classic terrible – kids cereals it's, it's been, a, been a while yeah a long time it's been a long i would think for you guys because you have kids that that's something i that, don't buy those ones yeah. really like I, a lucky, I like a lucky charms it. or like a tricks nope. or it's like well my kids call it vacation cereal because uh <laughs> Do they really? yeah because courtney sort in my uh, i mean she's convinced me to you know be a little more lax as we were on vacation so it's like they know that now it's like expected so they go right for like the reese's puffs 
or like you know one of those like golden grams. Like, I, you know what's crazy is I I was a big cereal guy though. Early, so was I. Early trainer yeah. days. Oh yeah, yeah. Me early too. trainer years, I was a big cereal guy. Easy. Sure. That's in fact that's how I got my carbs. I did weird shit too, like wow. sc- scoop my whey protein in my milk in my cereal and like eat cereal like that. Oh, like why? I did. Uh, now yeah. it's a bodybuilding meal. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah it's, totally. it's justified. What were your favorites when you were kids? Uh, I like Lucky Charms a lot. Um, Those I, are shit. Like, I like the best parts: the marshmallows, fruity pebbles, mm-hmm. Captain Crunch. Mm-hmm. Those are probably my my uh, triple mm. threat right there. Yeah, I like fruity pebbles a lot. Captain Crunch ruins the roof of your mouth. It Pro- ruins your whole face. Yeah. Pro- problem with fruity pebbles is it's gone in two bowls. Yeah, I would actually you got okay. cocoa pebbles, dude. Then you got chocolate milk. So cocoa like, pebbles, like magical. Good. What about uh, that? Was too. I too, can't believe you guys didn't chocolate. say pops. You guys don't like. Uh, oh, I like, nah, I like yeah. pops. Was all right. Pops. Really? Yeah, it was all right. Oh, I love pops. No, yeah. Golden grams. Golden dude. grams and CTC. Dude. Yep. Cinnamon toast. Crunch. The truth is, it doesn't though, get better. That's my crack. That's that one right there. Was just that was almost it's, too much. It is like on another dimension. I felt like when I was eating it that that dude would pop out, you know, the guy with the mustache and come out and be like, diabetes. You know what I'm talking about? The guy in the commercial? Yeah, pretty much. You know what, though? The truth is I don't think I've had any of those now that I think about it. I had, all, I had all the knockoff oh, version. Oh, man. You had the multi-meal You haven't meal lived ones? unless you've had yeah. CTC, bro. I had all the- You I had, had the multi-meal, the yeah. ones that came in a plastic bag? Yes, the big tall plastic <laughs> bags. <laughs> like, no branding on it. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All yeah. the poor man. Like, mom, I want- Fru- Fruitios yeah. instead of Fruit Loops. Mom, I want, I want Lucky Charms, not Marshmallow Mateys. <laughs> Marshmallow Mateys. <laughs> That's what it's called. <laughs> I think you're right, dude. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw those. Now, my favorite cereal, I'll tell you what my favorite was, was uh, Smacks. <clears throat> uh, remember the one with the frog on it? Oh, yeah. Honey Smacks. Honey Smacks. Yeah. Now, not because it tasted the best, but because it was a never, it was my favorite way to fuck with my siblings because I would always do this, right? I'd open the cupboard, be like, hey, to my brother, hey, Joe, you want some smacks? Yeah. Yeah, oh, it's every morning. Wow. <laughs> never mean, they're they're asking for it. At that it point, never right? got old. You know yeah, what I mean? That's like my favorite joke. The <laughs> capital of Thailand? No? You don't know? Bangkok. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. What do you, what do On you, the floor. Yeah. Who do you call if your truck breaks down? I don't know. Tow truck. <laughs> Stomp on their foot. <laughs> but the smacks was the best because I'd have the box and I'd walk around. And my, yeah. when my brother had his cousin, when we had our cousins over, but they were all his age. So it was like the younger generation, right? So. I'm trying to think right now. My brother's uh, eight years younger than me. Is so they, he, he's eight years younger than you. I didn't know that. Uh, uh, no, s- let me think. No, six years Giuseppe? younger. Giuseppe? Yeah. I didn't realize he was that much younger. Six years younger than me, yeah. So I would be, you know, I'm I'm 12, right? And he's six. So he'd be there with my little cousins and they're- <laughs> Slapping the six-year-old oh, around? No, I'd have the- <laughs> What a dick. I'd have the box, yeah. you know? And I'd be like, hey, anybody want some smacks? Raise your hand. Everybody, and I'd do this on purpose. You're such a tyrant, Because I'd have my other cousin there who's my age, right? So we're both 12. And so we'd be like watch this. This is going to be funny. So I'd walk in the room. They're playing video games, you know? I'd walk in. I'd hold the box. I'd be like, anybody, raise your hand if you want smacks. And they'd, they'd raise their hand. They'd be like, all right, keep your hand up if you want a lot of smacks. Uh. <laughs> what, a bunch of, what a bunch of tyrants. Oh, just man. pure assholes. It's just mean. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So I was surprised yesterday because I was on Instagram <clears throat> and I'm, I'm scrolling through I and I, you know, and I, I try to keep up with, uh, you know, my best, my best uh, favorite Instagram pages like Justin Page and Adam's page. <laughs> Justin's and I go, page. And I go on Adam's. I'm not your favorite page. I, one of my favorites. <laughs> I'm supporting you. Hey, I'm, and I go on Adam's story. And I'm like, where whoa. the fuck is he at? This after work, he's at the beach. Oh yeah, I know, right? <laughs> what happened? This is uh, my my wife who thinks that we're rich all of a sudden. Just fucking hey, on a whim. <laughs> oh no, we're going gone. to the fucking beach house like on on a on a Wednesday night or whatever. I'm like, what is this, dude? So, but I mean, in her defense, it's been really hot at our place. Uh, we already did this, I, and I guess I started it right. I did it like two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. you did. I did it, but it was a Friday night. You know, we had no plans it was that a weekend. Wednesday night, like a one-off yeah. thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, no, it, this is it, all all the time now. Yeah, and so you know, I think I maybe that's what it is. Is I was just like, honey, let's go, and we packed up and we went to the beach for two days and stayed at our favorite spot mm-hmm. or one of our favorite spots. Um, so. Uh, I get home from work and I get a text like, we're at the beach. And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, I got a place for me and your sister over there. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Like, that's not, it's a Wednesday night, dude. <laughs> 
It's not even Ladies' Day. You know what? It's this all is good. Meanwhile, she's not working right now. Like, fuck. you know what? Yeah. This is so, so cool because this you mean is... I rented a fucking place to the beach tonight. Yeah, <laughs> I bought you those tickets to Cabo. Oh, good Jesus! Yeah. Oh, this is going to turn into a rant. Justin has something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know what's funny? I, I started a new standard too because we've been traveling and this and that. And so Courtney, like, well, she went down to San Diego and now she's going to Cabo, and then there's going to be a follow up in Palm Desert. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Pump, yeah, pump the brakes. Pump the brakes. That's what I was uh, saying. Let's stay home. This highlights the difference between men and women, right? Because like the you'll never get a better reaction than when your your wife or whatever or your girl comes home. And you're like, I know it's Wednesday, but we're going to the beach. Oh my god, I love yeah. you. Thank yeah. you. Totally different, right? For yeah. a guy, you come yeah. home. We're going to the beach. Fuck, man, I want to watch TV. Are you serious? Yeah, I wanted. To, I didn't want to <laughs> go anywhere. I had all these things I was gonna. <laughs> you know? I gotta, now yeah. I gotta go. Was uh, the weather nice over there? At least? Oh no, it was. It was epic. And in her defense, it was. Uh, I'm glad she did. And it was. It's be- It was beautiful over there. <clears throat> we were writing uh, content last night. For, and you were drinking rosé. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was so fancy. <laughs> That's in the room. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So it's, like, yeah, it's not like I brought my rosé or some shit. It's like in the room. I'm like, oh, this is nice. They have rosé. It's this five time. o'clock somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> rosé all day. <laughs> so that hey. was. Hey, I mean, a, a, a glass of. Uh, wine while I sat there and uh, you know wrote uh, stuff for the newsletter that we have coming up and shit I thought that was and with waves crashing it was probably a nice 78 degrees out there it was no it was beautiful bro man. the road yeah, man, you could do that more often you know oh, if you man. just you know look in that direction for now we're sounding so, more and more like just older people I'm telling you guys you know what I mean get well, away you, from the city the city's overrated I'll tell you what though Justin I you know, uh, this morning so uh, why I was like Telling her, like, you're crazy. Like, I have to work tomorrow. And she's like, it's not that bad of a drive. You know that. And I'm like, all right, well, I tell you what, you're right. I don't have to leave till seven. Seven's not like crazy early or anything. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll come out and then I'll spend the night and then I'll, I'll drive in the morning. And actually, it was a, a great drive in the morning. I mean, the most is like hour, hour and some change. Yeah, it, took cause, me, it took cause, me an hour and 15. And it was the same because I mean, I lived with my in laws for a bit in Almaden, and it took me an hour, an hour and 20 minutes to, just to get to Campbell from Almaden. So, so that was the frustrating part was. Yeah, because I'm sure the majority of the traffic was once you got close. All of yes, it was. There was zero. Here. There was zero traffic getting all the way to Morgan Hill. Mm-hmm. I had no traffic, and I was like, "Holy shit, this is like." And it was nice. I, went, I swung into yeah. Starbucks, got my morning, my my cup zero, and I'm driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm listening to uh, my favorite podcast, Mind Pump, and I'm drinking my coffee and just enjoying waking up slowly. Well, you're, you're really drinking you, the Kool Aid. You're doing a Mind Pump commercial yeah. <laughs> on Mind Pump. <laughs> Come on, Organifi Pure, just down the hatch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Life is good. Uh, chewing on my uh, butcher box steak on the fresh in the morning oh, on the way there. No. So <laughs> delicious. No, no. What do you guys do for dinner when you're out there? Do you go out to dinner or do you just do you cook? They they have a really nice restaurant there. So last night I actually had this. Um, I had lamb. I had lamb. Oh, that's my favorite. Lamb and quinoa. They have it. Yeah, on on the uh, the resort there is a. a place called the it's called the salty crab i think or something shit like that something like that mm. uh really good restaurant and it serves to the rooms but they actually now it's great man and this is i find this more and more places i, I travel to uh if i wanted to i could door dash anything within 15 minutes too mm. so we kind of do that uh and you know when i go there when i when we take off for a day or two like that i mean i told you guys share the other day like you know one night sometimes we'll do candy or some shit you know, when I'm there, I'm not I'm not competing right now, so I'm not counting calories. I'm not worried about mm-hmm. what we're doing. I, I do try and stay mindful, though. You know, something that I'm I'm really I've tried to practice in the last you know couple of years, I would say I've I've gotten much better at this. Is and I, I don't know if this comes from childhood shit of of uh, I, I definitely have a tendency to binge purge type of personality. I, I whoa, we make uh, no not purge. Yeah, no, I mean, a binge. Uh, <laughs> restrict? Yeah, binge restrict. Sorry. <laughs> I had to fix you there. <laughs> <Yeah. for some. laughs> yes, Hold on. I'm bulimic. Let's have a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. So, by the way. Yeah, it's no, it's not a good thing. So I, but I, I have a tendency to uh, do really well, restrict. And then when I decide, oh, I'm going to let, let loose, I let loose. And I'm trying to get away from that and be more like, ah, if I feel like a glass of, like I, I had, you know, two small glasses of wine. Like I didn't need to have the whole bottle uh, to myself. Uh, you know, if I like I told you the other day, you're when, pretty lightweight with alcohol, though. You feel that? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm a, like you. Yeah, that's enough for me because yeah. I don't drink, you know, on a regular basis. I've drank more with you guys in the last fucking, same. Yeah, three same, years. Same than I did. It's probably my influence. It's Justin. <laughs> it, yes. I'll be honest. It is. Yeah. Justin's the professional. Well, we influenced him on the marijuana side. He yeah, there you go. So yeah, yeah. yeah. instead of influencing Evens each other out. in a good way, <laughs> <laughs> we just took on each other's bad habits. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm I, a lot more aware of things in my stomach now, thanks to you, Sal. I think so. you guys both got my gut microbiome. Yeah, you both now have stomach. You problems. transfer it over. Yeah. yeah, but I love lamb. Lamb is my, hands down, it's my favorite uh, type of meat. Absolutely. Is it really? Absolutely. I, I, grew, I grew up with it. I mean, hmm. my dad, we ate beef also. We ate all meat, right? But when, when my dad would grill, he was known for grilling up um, lamb. That's that's what we do. I mean, I think Italians eat a lot of lamb or Mediterranean mm -hmm. cultures eat a lot of lamb. And it's just, I love the taste of it. It's It's got a nice fatty... You have to cook it properly, right? I think a lot of people are, are if they have it prepared wrong or overcooked, and it's got that yeah. gamey taste to it. Do you do mainly skewers or chops with it, or so all of it, all yeah, of the all above? Of yeah, all of the above. So I love lamb chops, of course. That's the it's like the lollipop of uh, of meat or whatever. <laughs> um, but we we, we do it all, and the way my dad would prepare it is he would bread it and then grill it, um, or my mom would you know season it a little bit and then we grill it. Yeah, and. Lamb has got really, really nice fatty acid profile. There's a, a fatty acid in lamb called um, conjugated linoleic acid, CLA. Have you? Do you guys remember the supplement yeah, CLA? Yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah. So studies show now there was some a lot of misinformation around CLA. It was sold as a fat loss supplement, which is stupid. It's a <laughs> you're taking capsules of fat. This will make me lose weight. It doesn't work that way. But what studies showed was that if people switched out their current fat and included more CLA. So the calories would stay the same, but they would increase their intake of CLA. So their fatty acid profile change. That's all they did. Same amount of fat that they would have fat loss, that the, the body would burn body fat and there were performance enhancing benefits from is, this. Is that the theory? Is the theory that that metabolizes faster? Is that why? The way that it's utilized in the body is different. I don't know all the details. I'd have to touch up a little bit on the, on the, the science of it. But CLA is a fat that has performance-enhancing um, effects. It, not unlike medium-chain triglycerides. MCTs are like this, too. Like, if you switch out your other type of fatty acids for MCTs, you'll also get leaner. But CLA has got the dual benefit of uh, some studies show muscle, a little bit of a muscle-building effect. And so for a while there in the 90s, I believe it was the late 90s, early 2000s, CLA was a popular bodybuilding supplement. I believe EAS even sold it as well. No, it was their... part of the Ergogen stack at 24. It was, right? CLA, uh, DHEA, uh, methoxybolic. Uh, oh, that's so funny. I remember the whole stack, bro. That's so funny. It was an $800 stack. You used to sell it to everybody. <laughs> that's, that's when we believed everything they told yeah. us. Yes, dude, yes. But, but CLA is interesting because it's got those, those Isn't properties. Isn't that amazing we used to sell $800 worth of supplements? That is. Yeah. I feel like it's such a piece of shit. Such a hustle. Some, but some kid, you don't know any better, dude. Some kid coming in wanting to build muscle, yeah. and I convinced them spending $800 on eat fucking all, of this, all, these, all pills. these pills. I used to yeah. do the same thing. That was back when, too, when they had the creatine pills that were like horse pills, yep. and you had to take yeah. 10 of them. Yep. So you had to take to take this they whole stack. They that was a chore. They were dude. they weren't capsules. They were tablets. Yeah, they were massive. Big. They were almost. They you weren't could only take one in at a time. So you had to like take yeah. ten gulps of water in you order to still get them choke. Yeah, yeah. and they and they weren't though. They were huge. They weren't as big as the amino acid ones I used to take back in the day. I used to take amino acid. <laughs> Pills, which I told you guys, the size yeah, of a cockroach. It's so funny. They were it, basically it, pressed whey protein, it's whey or, protein, or whatever. Just, yeah, and pill form. But they were like the size of like a wafer. It was like a big block. And I remember looking at this thing like, how am I gonna? So you guys ever see me take supplements? How I can take a, a huge handful yeah. and just swallow it? That's how I learned how to do it. Yeah, I learned how to like open my throat, and relax it. <laughs> I mean, that comes in handy for <laughs> other things. Dude. I'm saying, this. let's uh, let's really talk about where that started. Yeah. <laughs> Stop, just show me on the mic. Kind of like unhinged. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, you know, speaking, oh, of, speaking of CLA. <laughs> it's, it's things not to brag about. It's <laughs> yeah, a, a good hashtag. A couple of yeah. Yeah. Do you, speaking of CLA, do you know what else has a, a higher amount of CLA? Tell me, Sal. Uh, Grass-fed beef. Ah, so boo. there are differences between, because there's a little bit of a debate, right? I so, saw your story yesterday. Yeah, like uh, grain-fed beef uh, versus grass-fed beef. Like what are the differences? Well, first and foremost, uh, it's important, and this is important, I think, for a lot of people to understand. One of the differences between grass-fed beef and grain-fed beef is just the way that they're raised. So, if you want your, if you want animals to be raised more humanely, grass-fed meat is allowed to roam. 
Um, they're not treated the same way. They're, they're, they live more of a, I guess, natural life. Whereas the corn-based kind of grain-fed diet of, of grain-fed beef, they're kept in these feed lots. Um, they're, they're not allowed to move as much. It's just not as humane. So yeah. it's more humane uh, kind of across the board. But besides that, uh, there are some nutrient differences. Now, they're not major, huge nutrient differences, but they're big enough to where if you're like me, I eat red meat at least three or four days a week, at least. Sometimes five, six days a week I eat red meat. If you're going to eat that much red meat, then it does make sense to choose a red meat that is uh, that is higher in key nutrients like you know, vitamin E, vitamin D, the B vitamins, mm -hmm. uh, potassium, and higher in omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, Grass-fed meat is something like two to four times higher in the omega-3 fatty acids that we know are kind of anti-inflammatory, whereas grain-fed meat is, is more inflammatory. It yeah. just is. And then CLA. I just talked about CLA. You know how much more CLA grass-fed meat has than grain-fed? How much? Five times more. Oh, wow. It does. That's interesting. Now, I don't know if you guys have noticed this because I've experimented with this. I've experimented having very, very large <clears throat> amounts of grain-fed meat and how I feel. Mm -hmm. I'll track it. I'll write it down. Versus ha having large amounts of grass-fed meat and how I feel. And here's the difference. I notice it's easier to digest when it's grass-fed, and I notice uh, less uh, almost like inflammatory type symptoms. I'm less inflamed. So I think it's because the fatty acid profile is bigger. But again, if you're going to eat that much meat, if you eat a lot of red meat, it makes sense to go grass-fed. If it's here or there, I don't think it makes that big of a difference. Well, yeah, totally. Last night, I mean, I've been on this push to, to bring in organ meats because Courtney and I both have oh, yeah. avoided it because it's just it's not like the most pleasant, you know, idea of uh, you know incorporating that into your dinners and your lunches mm -hmm. and whatnot. So uh, we did, uh, you know, what you talked about before in terms of like getting a heart uh, and then grinding that up with the. You did that? Yeah, we haven't done that yet with the ground beef, and I made uh, burgers out of it last night. Yeah, so you take and like the kids didn't even it. notice it. No, nope. it was so great. No, you mix in like you take like a, an yeah. ounce of it and mix it in with like a half a pound or something of of red meat, and you because here's the other thing: organ meats are so nutrient dense. Yes, you don't. You're not going to give your kid liver every day because you'll actually get too much. They'll mm. get too many nutrients. They can actually overdo it. Hmm. So you mix a little bit in with ground with ground meat. You can't taste it yeah. at all, right? Yeah, not at all. So would you? Yeah. How much did you do? Like one heart per? Do you know what the what the ratio was? It was just one heart. That yeah, for it was like. Five burgers I made out of that, so yeah, I just I split it just evenly to all of them. Now, what's cool about the organs is each one of them is higher in like like the heart has particular nutrients that it's higher in versus the kidneys versus the the liver versus the brain. I've never had brain. Have you guys ever had oh, cow brain? No. Yeah, no, I've never done. I've that. had cow tongue though. That was interesting. Yeah, you could get that at um at some pretty decent Mexican restaurants. Yeah, the whole wall ones are great. Have yeah, you ever? That. It tastes. Hell I didn't good. really like it, but I decided to give it a try anyway. You don't like tasting something that's tasting It's a little grizzly, you know, for me. <laughs> yeah, it's tasting. We're, we're both tasting each other You're at like that point. It's kind of weird. Yeah. At that point. <laughs> a little weird. Have, yeah. you guys, have you guys found that there's, yeah. that there's a, a, a certain thing suggested? <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, have you guys found Captain that, obvious that there's a, a, a certain type of food that you tend to have? You know the term, uh, my eyes are bigger than my stomach? Yeah. Is there a certain type of food that you're more prone to that than others? Because I've identified one for me. What's that? Sushi. Oh, that would be one for me. I don't know. I almost. I, all, I, I do that all the time. Why? I order way too many rolls and then I never finish them all. I know, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't do that with anything else. Because you know else. why? It sucks mm. when you under order. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. when I get, when I, so I have like this, 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 this I always get, uh, depending on, because every place serves, whether it's four or six or 12 or 10. Uh, you know, I get 10 to 12 uh, pieces of salmon sashimi. Uh, that's like my, my first thing. And then I get two rolls, whatever I want. And I rarely ever do I finish the, the – and I knock out the salmon first, and then I enjoy the rolls afterwards. And I typically always leave one or two. But then I get mad if I only do like one – and then I finish, and I'm like, oh, could have easily had another mm -hmm. roll. So mm -hmm. it's, I think it's. It, what is it about sushi? Because I don't do that with anything else. Like I, I order a steak, I eat the whole damn thing. I know what I want to eat, and I eat it. With sushi, yeah. I always fucking do that. Well, it's because you get a, a roll is what normally five to eight pieces, depending on the how big it is, mm. and that's a lot. That's a that could be a meal for a other person. So for you, you're probably like one less roll is not enough for you. And it's so it's kind of hard to be right, right, right at the right amount, right? I think for me, maybe it's because I think I'm not getting enough. Maybe I'm thinking I need more rolls to get more protein. 
So I'm like, I need at least three yeah, rolls. Oh, you, you don't know, do it's any that satiating effect like protein. You kind of know, like that's my limitation. So do you not do any nigiri or any uh, sashimi with it? Well, sometimes I do, but not last night. Yesterday I just had oh, a yeah. bunch of rolls. I'll never just have rolls because you don't get shit for protein. Really? Yeah, yeah. And that's the the fucking bodybuilder in me. Like that was like a, a staple meal every week when I was competing with sushi. But I, I trained myself to always have either teriyaki chicken first or have the salmon sashimi mm. first so I get a solid six to eight ounces of meat and then I enjoy the rolls because you're just getting carbs, yeah, dude. You're yeah. just, I mean, it's all sauce and sauce and yeah. rice, you know, it's like the most part. You get like a, a fucking <laughs> little nibble. <laughs> little sneeze. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm laughing right now? <laughs> well, <laughs> because because every time we go out to eat with, uh, you know, uh, Mind Pump, <laughs> Adam goes. and I are always trying to convince everybody to get sushi because we love sushi. And of course, Doug. Doug loves sushi too. Yeah. And Justin's, you know, fucking uh, wants chicken out. nuggets and, you know, <laughs> chicken chicken nuggets. cheese pizza. <laughs> <Keep like, yeah. laughs> okay. Sippy cup. Yeah. yeah. So we're always like trying to, like, we're trying to convince him. Like, come on, man. No, there's good rolls. Are... So I don't remember where we were. I think we were in Tahoe. You, you made me eat the shittiest, like, sushi there was. It was. It was come terrible on, sushi. When I'm was so angry. That's why you're fired because now when it's going to take you a year to convince me. You don't remember that? Where were we so at? we were all, we were in Tahoe <laughs> and we were trying to convince Justin. It was like, like in a, truck, uh, Truckee or something. Was it? Yeah. We're like, no, no, it was a Tahoe. Oh, it was Tahoe. And we're like, we're gonna get, we're gonna get sushi. Justin, you're gonna try it. Trust me, you'll like it. And Justin, oh, yeah, terrible. Yeah, and Justin's oh, super that. agreeable. So he's like, okay, I'll give it a shot. So I'm like, yes, he's gonna love it. And then we're gonna eat sushi from now on. Yeah. But we picked the worst fucking sushi in the world. Well, yeah. Like I'm not gonna be a big baby about it. It's just not like on my. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Let's I'm, go. Tahoe's just not a great place for sushi. Period. Yeah, that too. I mean, yeah, yeah. Not a lot of ocean. Any seafood. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm like, I, I want to be on the wharf if I'm eating seafood. Or I want to yeah. catch it myself. Like. Yeah. That's the best. No, yeah. I'm with you on that. But we ruined our, our chances because that was yeah. shitty sushi. <laughs> it was a very small window. Yeah, it's like when you get your kid to finally try something, you know? And they're like, <laughs> yeah. Like, Damn it. And you blow it. Yeah. 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 Did you blow guys it, see uh, the new Biggest Loser trainers? Yeah. Oh, Did you see one that? of our friends. Yes. Erica Fit Love. Yeah. She's on there. Very interesting. And then what's his name? Steve Cook. There you go. That's the other guy that's on there, too. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, what do you guys think the criteria is in terms of the trainers that they pick? Um, being good on camera. Yeah, I think that's a hundred. Yeah, that's pretty they're, much they're it, right? Got to be good actors on some, you know, some level. Yeah, I think they're looking for like compelling story, I good think, on camera. I think yeah, I think they look for some very likable, very likable, very it's yeah. hard. It's hard not to like Erica. No, she's it's, one of the most likable people likable. Right, I've it's, ever met. It's hard not to like Steve Cook. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's uh, there's people that hate. I'm sure on both of them, yeah, but mm -hmm. I mean, they're oh, oh, generally speaking, they're extremely likable, like people. squeaky clean kind of, you know, like a uh, uh, what's that guy that that does all the um, like the countdowns for New Year's Eve. Oh, uh, shit. You know What's what I'm saying? Name? Ryan Seacrest. Seacrest yeah. Like that kind of like, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm America. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Like, they, they, they kind of talk like that. I have no strong opinions. Yeah. I, um, how would you guys approach, let's just say you're a trainer. Would you do it? How about that? Yeah. There, it's, I mean, good question. Forget now. Now we're mind pump or whatever, and it's easy to say oh, no. Yeah, but, of course, yeah. But, you know, six years ago, you know, you're working in fitness, you're building, you're still building your business, you've been training for a long time. You know, Biggest Loser comes and be like, hey, we want to pay you, you know, a million dollars. You're going to get famous. You're going to be, after this, you're going to have total fitness authority. They don't get paid that. Whatever. How much yeah. do they get paid, do you think? Not very much Probably at all. A few yeah. hundred grand? I think it's, I think no. it's, uh, no, not at all. I think uh, like maybe. Like, you're going to make a million dollars. Like 30. If you don't, if you're not a train, if you're a train on the Biggest Loser and you don't turn that into making a million dollars. Okay, well, listen, here's it. But it's all in the contract. Look at, look what happened to our boy Ben, ben Zorn. Zorn. exactly. Great example. That's different though. It's, yeah, it's, it's Bachelor, just, but whatever. No, but, totally different because if you're on the Biggest Loser. totally the, the, different. The pay is the, the, probably the same though. No, no, no. I forget the pay of being on the Biggest no, Loser. No, you're talking about afterwards. The authority you have. Yeah I mean, oh, you sure. become a famous trainer. You're America's, yeah, person. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Point, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you could still fuck that up, though, bro. You, you totally could. You, if you don't have a good, if you don't have great systems in place, and well, you haven't built the the company to support the onslaught of people you're about to get, yeah. you may not make as much money as you think you're. There's making. my one and only kudos to Jillian Michaels. Is she actually turned that into something? She did. She it, did. It made a massive and like, she's really her, business out of she's, it. She's. I did. Have you heard of any of the other trainers? Uh, uh, yeah. Na name and name. Give, give me a name. Bob, Bob Harper. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, which was one. on the same season, by the yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. That okay? was the yeah. punctual so, season. So Bob, Bob and Jillian Michaels. Okay, they've had like fucking thirty seasons or whatever. It's ridiculous how many seasons they had. So I, I give me another trainer. It was still going to be yeah. honest. Give me another trainer. Yeah, I don't know. It's so, like Survivor. Do you know Survivor is still going? 
Is it? Yeah. I didn't know. Wow. Crazy, right? They're yeah. on like the 50,000 So would you, so, season. okay, Mind Pump doesn't exist. You're making 60 to 90 grand a year as a, a trainer working for a place. You get approached by Biggest Loser, Justin, Sal. Yeah. Do you take it? Um, no. Really? 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 You liar. You are a liar. <laughs> You're a fucking liar. <laughs> As much as I'm against it, bro, I would probably well, take it. I, I would, I would take it, but I would be like uh, a rock star. And no, 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 I don't know. I don't think I would. Really? Yeah, you're a liar. No, because I don't like you guys. Like attention, I don't like it. <laughs> oh god, yeah. do you know what I mean? He flipped that pretty good, though. Yeah, he did flip that he pretty did. good. You know what though? Here's the here's the struggle that I would have. Here's the struggle. <laughs> good liar. I know. Just, hey, I'm Justin, the best. You want a lot of money? No. Yeah. You know what? Here's, <laughs> no. No, I don't like the attention. Yeah. You want to keep like working it. at 25 minutes? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I just want to stay in my box. <laughs> here's here's what my struggle would be because when you're on that show, and this is my my same challenge is how do you maintain your integrity as a trainer by following those parameters? Because you're taking a bunch of severely obese. I don't, obese. You I don't think you can. You can't. Yeah. It's no way, right? Well, no. because if you did the right way, it would be show, shitty TV. The show has become yeah, a competition. Definitely. Okay, so there's people that are they have learned to hack the system. They load up on carbs. They load up on water. They gain weight going into yeah. It. They gain weight. They know how to manipulate the scale. So it's turned into it's turned into a game. It is a yeah. game. It's a game to win a million dollars. So mm-hmm. and they want it to be emotional. So they want people to cry. Right. You know. And so they want you to yell at people. And they want you to do all this stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like that's all part of it. Yeah. Yes. So it would I it would be challenging. Um. But I tell you what, I I would do it. But then I also would like. It's just like I've ran boot camps before, mm-hmm. right? And I don't and I don't agree with with group training. You've heard the way I've talked about group training, so I would probably do it. But then I would speak out afterwards. So I was going to say, how so, are you going to angle yourself afterwards? Yeah. You know, what do you like? You come out with a book. Yeah. Like, how do you, you reconcile? Like, how do you how do you reconcile exactly, yourself? <laughs> now that you've tarnished your whatever, yeah. like, I image. would write a book about what happens when you chase greed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And sell it. Yeah, and sell it. And sell it. Sell what, it. A, what a fucker. <laughs> that's so, that's, I like that answer better than mine. That's Just, good. You know, what, yeah. you know what, though? So I, I thought about this a lot, actually. I thought, I thought about this. After we found out that our friend was going to be one of the trainers, I thought, God, how would I approach this? You know what I would do? I would just be totally honest while I was on the show, and I would tell people, "Look, we're they gonna do this." Air you, it, you, yeah, they wouldn't. Air no, it. no, no, no. Or you would lose. No, out. the way Get I would say, kids. I'd say, "Look, this oh, is wait. not how we're gonna do this for long-term success, but this is a competition. Oh, okay, this is the fastest yeah. way to do it, and I'm gonna do this in the safest way." That we could do this in the fastest. If I was way. a producer, I would like catch you when you're sleeping, put like you know, like a like a hard alcohol like bottle next to you, bleh, like so you just look like you're just you what know. a jerk you'd be. <laughs> Come on, like they want drama, dude. You know, yeah. let's give it to the people. Oh, I would be dramatic. Come on, how mm-hmm. long have you known me? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'd be, yeah, I'd be crying with them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, I really would right, though, for right, real. Right, you know? right, yeah, right. no, I would, I would struggle with it. I'm not gonna lie. It would be a, I, but no doubt in my mind. Um, it, Take me back to 25 years old. Uh, also, when I think I've openly talked about uh, much of my motivation was uh, financial success, I would see the dollar signs with the opportunity, regardless if I uh, if I believe in the philosophy behind it. Because here's the thing: when it first hit this, when it first came out, I actually really liked it. In fact, I remember it came on the scene right in the heart of like when reality TV was blowing Mm -hmm. up and it was right after reality TV started blowing up and it was starting to turn into like, it was the Jerry Springer era and a lot of fucking garbage TV, Mm -hmm. right? Just polluting your mind with fucking trash and drama. And out comes this show about people losing fat and eating better and exercising. And as a trainer, I was super pro the show. I really was. I thought it seemed like it had good intentions. I believe it really did. But because there's money involved and it's competitive, it started to kind of morph and change over the course of the the, the first five mm-hmm. seasons. And that's where I really started to fall off of watching it because I was like, oh, man, this just took a turn. It took a turn down the drama route. They started capturing more of the fighting and arguing behind the scenes. There's someone stomping off. And they're be- training them terribly, like, well, so they fucking throw up or want to, you know, pass out and beating the crap I'm out of them. I'm actually them. surprised it still exists with all the body positive people out there. Well, know? I think they spin it to be more about positivity. And health. So, yeah, and mm-hmm. health. And health. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not healthy. You're watching a bunch of people starved, get starved, and beat up in, in an environment that simulates zero of real life. I'm surprised that it's it's been around long because of the statistics on it. That's what's what's staggering to me that people still watch, still want to be a part of it, still glorify it 
when 80% mm -hmm. of the people that lose the weight not only gain the weight back, but they put on more. Yeah. 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 Very few people keep the, keep that going. And God knows where, where they're at 10 years later. Mm -hmm. This is just statistically over the course of the next few years after yeah. they See, leave See, that the would show. be a good way to spin it is that you're the trainer on there and then afterwards on your own time, then you continue to train the people to help them out. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. But film it and put it on Instagram. I like my book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, monetize you know what I'm saying? it. But yeah, it's it's you know what it reminds me of? I I used to train a lot of doctors and if you brought up Grey's Anatomy, they'd want to punch you in the face because they're watching <laughs> yes. TV doctors and it would annoy the shit out of them. <clears throat> yeah. And I think because we're tr as trainers, it's actors pretending to be trainers. Yeah, as trainers you watch it and it makes and it you get the same feeling, you know? Yeah. But if you if you if you look at it through the lens of this is entertaining TV, then I guess it's 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 okay. It's yeah. hard to come after. You know who is another? Who's the other? Who's what's? His I name? like the workout better. Remember that one where they're all like, I love that banging each other. Yeah, the drama, all drama. Oh, yeah. the one that was on E. Yeah, or that was on. Uh, it was. Uh, there was like a then the main one's like a lesbian that was converting all these girls. And yeah, they're on the spicy. They're on the sky, the sky gym. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Greg Plitt was on it, wasn't he? I mean, that's my yeah. jam. For a second, he was. Yeah, he, was, he had sex with all the girls in the first season, like yeah. first episode. <laughs> Well, I was you, like, who is this guy? Yeah, he's that like, one was the fire. well. The, that one was the most real. I feel like that one. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, this is like a gym right Dude, here. The gym is a meat market. Everybody forgets that. Yeah, no, that's, it's, that's, it's number one in infidelity. Number two is hospitals, right? So yeah. it's one. Wow, one. Justin is according to statistics. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we, you we, should we, be in an open relationship. Well, we, yeah, according <laughs> to statistics. Yeah, <laughs> that's terrible. Yes. You know, we defy the odds. Speaking of, of of this kind of stuff, I had no idea that. There, so, do you guys know that there's an app called uh, fuck? What's the name of the it's to connect sugar daddies with sugar babies. It's called Sugar Babies. <laughs> Thanks, <Jeff. laughs> No, you know how I know this? How do you know? Because all we, we've done already a ton of trips to LA. They advertise it on the fucking billboards. That's oh crazy. My, I remember that. Yes. I asked, I was like, I've what seen is a sugar baby? I have seen it advertised. You don't know what a sugar baby is? No, I mean, I know, but now, but it's, I didn't then. It, yeah, it's literally young girls, most of them college, who are looking for men, and the average man on this site is mid-40s, yeah. who's going to... Help pay them their bills. You know what? They, you know what? This is soft. And, this is soft prostitution, is what they call it. Right? Yeah, totally. It's like you don't have to strip. I mean, they've hacked the system. It's crazy, and but it's it's gaining in popularity. And they did some surveys at some universities, and in some universities, the statistics was as high as two or three out of ten. Two or three out of ten girls. What are pursuing a sugar daddy or through apps like this or other types of things. Wow. Dang. It's that popular? In, in this one article I read, that's what it said. What? Yeah, dude. Wow. Yeah, my, my kid's not going to fucking college. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know what? It's Dang. funny because, uh, I, you know, I don't know where I stand on this because it's been happening forever. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's been happening forever, yeah, right? It's not the first time. Right. And they're doing a trade. Yeah, exactly. Am I more pro because it's out in the open and you're just saying, hey, this is what it what it is. Instead of like yeah. trying to pretend like I'm in a website. For instead you of now. pretending like you're in love with a guy 40 years older than you are. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. just like, hey, it is what it is. It's yeah. like the Amazon wish. I know what he like. I know what he likes. He, I know what I like. And at least you're right. You're right, though. At least they're honest about it. Right. Like, no, he's got an he's really nice. He's got a nice personality. Oh, yeah. She's super mature. <laughs> you know, she's like the most mature 19 year old I've ever met in my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know I mean? He's like handsome sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah, right. He's He's say? He's I mean, that's yeah. crazy. What are you guys doing for free time? You know, yeah. color color pictures together? Yeah, right? dude, two out of three out of ten or three out of ten. At some university really high. At some universities it was it was staggering. It was yeah, it was like 10, 15, 20 percent of these girls saying, you know, said that they've definitely pursued. Now have you guys known any any guys or girls personally that are like that? I I had a buddy of mine I knew who he, who oh, got boy. divorced. He was forty two <laughs> when he got divorced, and then he had a twenty year old girlfriend and that was his girlfriend for a little while and it was really weird because his, he had a daughter that was like 17 do you imagine that bringing home your girlfriend and you're like hey you guys can hang out together <laughs> you're like the same age no i i have i have two that are like really close to me that i know both guys one guy's in uh, the club industry owns like nine different uh well, night, that makes sense night clubs yeah. Uh, yeah. and he's got like six different girlfriends yeah. and they and he's six different fan. yeah yeah six different they all have apartments and cars oh he pays for all that yeah stuff? yeah he's oh got so he's got a part they all get, uh, get like to mafioso live. style yeah right they, there. and and the family knows like it's like it's like very it's open about it now he doesn't flaunt it and shove it in the wife and the kid's face but and most of the girlfriends are the age of the his their oldest daughter, oh, so wow, that's yeah, so who's my who's my age? So he's he's like late sixties, early seventies, dating girls that are in their thirties and stuff, and they all have apartments, they all get cars, 
And, you know, and they, and that rotation changes. One of them acts up or doesn't fucking, he's not happy with one of them. She's out, car gets fucking repossessed. And new one. It's like a basketball, it's like a roster. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're the other, the, this other one was a dude uh, that I know really close to also, uh, big time into uh, uh, recycling industry, that side of the house, makes millions of dollars. And same thing, multiple houses, cars. He even had a guy, like his main security guy, like that was his job was to manage all the girls. So sometimes one of them would be- Wow, he put know, a lot of thought into this. Yeah, no, totally. It's crazy. That's insane. They would go to Vegas too. They, they all go together. You know, the God, whole, if, whole, if this is your daughter, you got to think to yourself as a, as, a, as a father, like, wow, I fucked up. Well, I think as a, as a, yeah. Yeah, I think as a father, that's your goal is to keep your daughter off these apps. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like uh, it used to be the pole. That's what they used to say. Like your one job as a dad is to keep your daughter off the pole. It's like- That was the Chris Rock one, bit. Right, you, yeah. right. But your one job as a dad now is to keep them off But you know, app. to be honest though, statistically, speaking um women rank security much higher in terms of attractiveness mm -hmm. how often do you see a very you know unattractive uh you know but wealthy successful man with a super attractive woman and they actually like each other more often than the opposite you don't see the you personally don't see the opposite hey right? personally i mean i if i had a daughter it would, i would not be i would hope that i would would keep her from this direction, but uh, you know, I'm somebody who's like teach their own man. I mean, that's, that's true. If nobody's and, getting hurt, yeah, yeah, and it's, yeah. it's all. And I, I mean, it. who am I to say? I mean, who, sure. who am I to say that? It, you know, if the, if she values security over looks and sex and all those other things, like, mm -hmm. and he provides that security for her. Well, there's a and thing. he 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 enjoys youthfulness, and she provides that for him. Yeah, I don't fuck. I don't. The care. tough thing would be just what do you do besides? I mean, I get the sex part. You know, what do you do besides that though? Like, how, what kind of conversations do you have? You know, like <laughs> well, the guys, so the guys. That, hey, with cartoons. Well, the, the guys that I that I'm talking about, the two that I that I have, the only two that I know really well in this situation. You know, they they. Uh, for as old as they were, acted very, very young. You know, they were hip. They were so they're they're, they're partying. They're yeah, the club they are acting like they're twenty five. Eating Viagra like it's candy. Yeah, no, totally doing doing the party scene and stuff like that. Uh, just like what a lot of twenty five year olds would be doing, mm -hmm. and and that's they have that connection. And yeah. that I, I don't know if that's a yeah. a fear of getting old and hanging on to that. I don't give a He's shit. Like, whatever, hey, I'm but. getting jiggy with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, kids? Yeah, what's <laughs> what are those candies you're eating right there? Those blue, yeah. those blue candies. <laughs> you creep me out, old guy. Yeah. Speaking of, of boyfriends, girlfriends type of stuff, there's a guy that got arrested because he um, used a drone to a, to drop explosives on his ex girlfriend's house. What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. I'm sorry to laugh. He about his, <laughs> he that's bought, messed up. He bought a drone. <laughs> And he made like little mini explosives, and he flew the drone Are around. You serious? Dropping. Yeah. So this is the biggest bombs on our house. This is the biggest fear. You know wow. what? Something like that. One person does that, and this is going to ruin it for everybody. You know? Yeah, what I'm saying? that's that's a new thing, man. That's yeah. not cool. Because that is like one of the biggest fears of this shit is people being able to do stuff like that. Yeah, just drop shit on you with you the drone. Get a Falcon, yeah. dude. Falcons will take them down, they right? Do. Yeah. You ever watch it? Like uh, I remember. So we just had the the uh, Super Bowl at Levi Stadium. And I saw this this article where they they had all these trained falcons like all over the outside, so none of the drones like real come like in. birds, real yeah. falcons. Yeah, and they just they take them right out of the that? air, snatch no. them. They train them to do that to take down a drone. Yeah. Really? They're yes. Badass, dude. And they do. Yeah, they're very good at it. Oh, you got to show me a video, Doug. They'll of this. fly and they'll grab it with their their, their talons. Get yeah. the fuck out! Yeah. You guys are pulling my leg. I I'm swear serious, to God, dude, that's a hundred percent. They train the birds to go get the drones because yes. well, how do falcons uh, hunt? They hunt other birds yeah, in the, in the air. air. It's part of their natural behavior to take out a flying object. You didn't know that? I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, Doug's going to pull up a video. We got to watch yeah, that. Yeah, this is the first time I saw that, and I was like, oh, it's so smart. That sounds badass. Right? Yeah. I want to be a falcon trainer. Well, pff, you got you ever seen oh. the guys on horses with the falcons? What are they, Mongolians and shit? Yeah. yeah. That's, those are the badasses. Yeah, Doug. they pick up goats and just drop them off cliffs. Those aren't falcons, though. Those oh, are, those are eagle, golden uh, eagles. Oh, wait, oh, these, this is an eagle. This is trained eagle. Maybe they're trained okay. eagles, at eagle. Justin. Even better. Yeah, look at this, look at this. This is great podcast silence. Yeah, that yeah. was that was a lot weaker than what I thought. Well, I saw a better well, one before. Yeah, I, I want to see one like d dive in. Like, he's like sitting still. Like, come on. Yeah, man, I saw all pictures. I didn't really see the you video. You want to see battles or yeah. what? Well, yeah, I want to see like one flying over like like a peeping Tom or something and a falcon goes in and goes, yeah. <laughs> just like grabs it. Yeah. Smash it. A peeping Tom. <laughs> like, I want the drone to be doing something bad and the yeah. falcon saves him. Well, you know they saves make, a baby or something. You know that they make um, uh, drones that also have flamethrowers on them. And <laughs> wow! No, no, no. These are legal this drones. Is out of control. No, no, they're legal drones. You know what they're made for? <clears throat> 
pe- uh, uh, people will fly them around their property and use the flamethrower to burn, um, what are they called? Hornet's nests. And they'll yes. fly up and they'll... Oh, my God. Yes. Yep. Really? Yes. Wow. Yep. Uh, did you I see, love stuff like Did that. you see the video that uh, Marcucci sent over? He sent it to me. I was curious if he sent it to you also. Of the the helicopter with the chainsaws, yeah, that, was, that, that saws like all the branches oh, next yeah. to power lines. Yeah, yeah that yeah. looks crazy. Yeah, that looks crazy. Imagine getting tangled though, like oh no, no, for like, sure. The wind gets you. And I just zzz. now the, the twisted my twisted mind, my twelve year old twisted mind thinks like oh that'd be cool in war. Like ah, I don't yeah. <laughs> feel oh with God, a, a chainsaw, that chainsaw from a anyway. All right, our first question is from Coach Carruthers. How would you create an efficient 30-minute workout when training a client once a week? We answered this a long time ago, and I I wanted us to answer it again because I think think what most people would think you would say is run them through a circuit. Yeah, that's the craziest circuit from hell. Yeah, Yeah, and that's probably what I would have done as a a 22-year-old trainer too, so I get it. Yeah. Um, Today, I would do something completely different. So if I only have 30 minutes with a client, I'm probably going to choose the exercise or couple exercises that I think have the greatest impact on on helping them. So if that's a client that has a lot of aches and pains and uh, issues that I need to address corrective, Mm -hmm. then it might be three- More of a kin stretch. Right. It might be 90-90 transitions. It might be some combat stretch stuff. It may be handcuff rotation type stuff because- to me, that's the the greatest priority for that client. If it's somebody who's trying to build muscle, burn body fat, kind of basic aesthetic type goals, I'm probably going to pick things like a squat or a deadlift or overhead press, pick two or three of those movements and and focus on them in, in those 30 minutes. And, you know, you could get a, a great squat session in, in 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, you know? I, I think it depends. So this is getting more and more popular. I, I don't know if it's if, it, if the trend is still moving in this direction, but it was about four years ago when I kind of, you know, a few years ago when I stopped <clears throat> personal training. Part of the reason why I think this trend started to, to grow was because more people wanted personal trainers, but the cost of yeah, personal the training- the cost was the barrier. Yeah, and then the, and the belief that, oh, you know, 30 minutes is all you need to work out, and I can train you so hard in 30 minutes- that you're not going to be able to do an hour anyway, and this kind of became the the issue. This is why I've always I've been against these 30 minute sessions because that's what tends to happen. Agreed. Well, and a lot of the uh, you know managers and whatnot were kind of promoting this as a way to squeeze in more clients per day, and so it's like you, if you could keep stacking like every half hour you're running a client, you know, now all of a sudden you have a ton of clients you're servicing, but is it really good service? Yeah, and and, and here's the problem with that when you're when you're transitioning that many clients in you know 30 every 30 minutes you don't, they don't get a full 30 minutes there's a little bit of a transition period it's between like clients minutes. yeah so you end up they end up losing 5 to 10 minutes and then the trainer feels pressured to train them even harder to give them their money's worth now that being said if this was me if i was a trainer training a client for th- which i did have clients that were 30 minute uh, workouts and the reason why i had clients that were 30 minute workouts was not because they were short on time or short on money it was because it was what was appropriate for them. Many of these people were in advanced age or younger clients. So I'd have clients that would bring me their kids sometimes, you know, 11-year-olds or 12-year-olds, in which case a 30-minute workout is about as much time as their attention span would allow them to, to, to do with me. And I'd want them to have a good relationship with the gym. Or older clients who come in and I do correctional exercise with them for about 30 minutes. But let's say this was just the regular person, regular average person coming to see me for 30 minutes. The way I would structure it is I would, for the first sessions, I would teach them easy to learn mobility movements that they could do for about 15 to 20 minutes before they my session with them starts. So the first few sessions, I'm going to teach you how to do these mobility movements. And then after the first few workouts, that's what you're going to do when you come to the gym before you meet with me. So I want you to show up about 20 or 30 minutes before our appointment. I want you to do these mobility movements. Then when it's time for our session to start, we jump right into the workout, and then I'm doing a lot like what Adam said. I am going to focus entirely on what I think is going to give them the most bang for their buck, which probably is going to look like three exercises that we're going to focus our time on, or maybe one complex, different, uh, difficult exercise that I'm going to focus the entire 30 minutes. My goal would be, especially if it's only once a week, my goal with that 30-minute session would be to, per- to set them up so that they could do certain uh, workouts on their own. 
So I'm going to be doing, I'm going to teach them things that are kind of easy that I can see that they can learn. Here's what you're, here's what you're going to do on, during the week when you're not with me. Yeah. And kind of so on. Well, that, and that's the thing too. I would like to establish a good ritual for them to do prior to the training session. So if it was, you know, very specific to what they needed mobility wise, or they needed to, you know, warm up, I would, I would have them, you know, I would work on that the first few sessions, maybe the first week, you know, we're going to establish this, this ritual. And then maybe I could, you know, see them and, and, and be the accountability that they already did that coming in. Now we're just going to focus on, you know, resistance training and those major lifts that we're trying to build the skill for. Yeah. I guess you need to know if this client is, they, the client only has 30 minutes to train. And so you, you have to try and get as much as you can done in the only 30 minutes. If that's what we're talking about, or is this person only buying 30 minute sessions? That's all they can afford. That's but they, point. Because how, what, what I'm dealing with, I would, I would change and modify, right? Like, cause I actually had clients, I actually had a lot of clients that were, that did like the 30 minute thing, or I have a lot of clients even today who I'll see I don't have a lot, but I have a, people that do see me today, uh, will come to see me just for like the squat. Yeah, or just for deadlift. They're right. like they're experienced. They've been lifting for a really long time, but we understand the, all the nuances of squatting and deadlifting and overhead press and bench press. You know, there's a lot of little details that they they may not feel very confident in mm -hmm. addressing or knowing what's going wrong in the movement. So they'll be like, "Hey, Adam, can I just can I come by the gym for 30 minutes and have you watch me squat and critique mm -hmm. my right. form?" And so, and they feel, I mean, they feel totally fine doing bicep curls and tricep push downs and lateral raises and like a lot of the real basic movements that there's not a lot of risk. There's not a lot of things going on and they don't need me for that. They just, they need help with how to get into the squat properly, how to deadlift properly and where, where their breakdown is. And so I, I could see a lot of value in 30 minute sessions that are mm -hmm. used like that, but that I'm also assuming that person is going on to go do all the other, you know. Uh, auxiliary movements besides yeah. what what I'm teaching them. Yeah, but you know, but here's the reality because we always speak to what actually happens in the real world, right? Because we're talking about how we would do it in in a in a in make the best of the scenario. But here's what ends up happening in the real world: trainers just beat the crap out of someone for 30 minutes. This is how these sessions are being used. Yeah. I, I haven't seen, and I think that's the worst way to use. That's it. a oh, terrible. Yeah. That's that's what ends up happening, though, right? Like yeah. I, I I've seen. I've seen a lot of these, and very rarely do I see them being utilized appropriately. It's typically, it's typically sold like you don't need a whole hour to work out. We could get all, we could get the, the same sixty minute workout yeah. in thirty minutes by cutting out all the rest periods and increasing the intensity. In which case, now it's just a shitty workout. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a shorter shitty workout. Oh well, yeah, now it. it's just turning into cardio with weights. Yeah, you know, now all you're doing is exercise, exercise, low rest periods, circuit training type stuff, and it's like you know. We're now starting to turn this more into yeah. a cardio session than it is a really good way. And how do they session. sell it? You only need 30 minutes, or that's all you can do is 30 minutes. We'll burn the maximum amount of calories possible. Exactly. Next question is from Cam the Lamb. Is intermittent, intermittent fasting ever a good idea when wanting to lose weight? No. Uh, we, we talked about, we did a whole episode on why fasting is a terrible right. way to lose Not weight. Not with that focus. Yeah, now, yeah, exactly. Now, now, keep in mind, can you lose weight by, let's change the word from fasting to not eating. Can you lose weight by not eating? Well, yeah, that's what yeah, happens. It's kind of a byproduct. <laughs> that's what happens yeah. when you don't eat, you lose weight. Is that a good uh, tool and method to losing weight in terms of the kinds of behaviors that you develop in terms of the relationship that you encourage yourself to develop with food? Terrible. Yeah, terrible. models have been doing this for decades. Yeah, they, they, exactly. <laughs> now all of a sudden it's healthy <laughs> now. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we put we threw a name on it, backed it by science, and showed some things with growth hormone and neurogenesis, and now we're like, oh, it's fucking healthy for you. Now yeah. everybody's it's like, no, this shit, these skinny ass models have been doing this for years where they fucking don't eat all yeah, day long yeah, and yeah. they have carrots for dinner. Yeah, like, now all of a sudden yeah. you're like, you know, what are you doing, uh, Greta? You're like, yeah. oh, I'm fasting. I'm biohacking. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> no, it's no, no, no. Starving yourself to try to lose weight. Now, here's what ends up happening. Forget about the physiological effects and the and the results. Yes, if you don't eat, you lose weight. Okay, let's 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 get that out of the way. But let's let's talk about what ends up happening psychologically or behaviorally. You end up encouraging this restrict binge model of nutrition where I don't eat, I don't eat, I'm restricting myself, I'm losing weight, I'm losing weight, and now it's time to eat. Now I'm off the diet, and then when you're off, you're off. It's a complete reversal. It's a, a, a symptom eruption, and it looks like binging. It actually encourages that type of behavior. 
Um, the only people that should be using fasting are people who use it for overall health and wellness and people who have good relationships to food. If you have issues with food, especially if you have issues like anorexia or bulimia, even if it's been in your past, even if you think you're past all of that, yeah. fasting, you are uh, at- Avoid it. Yeah, you're, it's like you're a recovering alcoholic who's like, yeah, I haven't had an alcoholic drink for two years. I'm going to go get a job at a bar or I'm going to go t- you know, be a wine tester now for the rest. Terrible, terrible approach. Do you guys have a favorite type of person you like to teach it to? Oh, yeah. Like when you think about like the like I have a I have a type of person that I like to teach oh, for six meal to. a day kind of person. I, yeah. I was that yeah. guy. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So I, I think that I think somebody who understands macros, counts really well, they they break up their meals four to six times a day. They're religious about that. They're good. They're great. And they're and, and they're in shape, they're healthy, they're all those things. I love to teach them intermittent fasting. Mm-hmm. I love to introduce them to, hey, it's okay. We cannot eat for you know, twelve hours straight, and you're not going to lose most. Their it's relationship like to food is the yeah. is the diff- is the opposite. It was mind blowing for me. You know, I came from the, the the the. I had a my uh, body image was about. I thought I was too skinny, so I was always trying to gain weight and put muscle on. So I was literally afraid of skipping a meal. In fact, I would get so irritable and angry when I missed a meal, and I thought it was because I needed to eat, but in reality, it wasn't. It was a psychology. It was because. Now that I, I say, oh shit, it's been five hours since I've had my last meal. I am thinking in my mind that muscle is eating itself, that my body's metabolizing its muscle and I'm going to lose gains. Oh no, I need to feed myself type of deal. The first time I did a fast, I fasted for 24 hours and the fact that I didn't lose any muscle, the fact that my performance didn't decrease and that I felt okay, it blew my mind. Yeah. It shook up my whole world. All of a sudden, I broke that chain that I had connected to food. No longer did I, re- you know, I realized that no longer do I have to carry protein bars with me everywhere I went, that I did I had to eat every two hours. Yeah. I had a similar experience, but I, you know, being on the athletic side of the spectrum, not as neurotic about what I was eating in terms of, you know, having to have like a very regimented schedule, but more just in, in excess amount of surplus, right? Because it was all about like how I was feeling energy wise and like how that was translating to the field. And so, you know, very much like dependent on these big meals, like constant big meals. And so to now, you know, take that away and understand like what real, like what hunger actually feels like was like a totally different experience. And also just the social elements and, you know, everything involved with it for me to just step away from it was just a very, you know, unique uh, thing to go through. So that's my favorite person to talk to. Then I have my least favorite person to try and teach it to, or will I will avoid teaching it to. And that's a fat loss person. Someone who comes to me and they say, Adam, I want to lose weight. Uh, and my girlfriend or my friend is doing intermittent fasting. You know, can we try that? I say no. Uh, and I, and I won't let them try that at least not at the beginning because almost always, and you've heard me talk on the show before my diet philosophy. Like when I have a client that wants to lose weight, I don't restrict food at the beginning. I find it, uh, I've, have had way more success by introducing more good food into their diet than by restricting and taking away. Because most people that have a weight problem that struggle with weight loss have already done the yo-yo dieting mm-hmm. and already have that relationship that Sal was talking about, the um, binging and then restricting the binging and the restricting. So I don't want to encourage that by teaching them intermittent fasting. Now, I will allow them to do that down the road, maybe six months after we've been training together and we've built up their metabolism and they're eating more calories than they've ever ate before. And I'll say, hey, this Friday, let's do a fast. You know, And I prefer that over the, the, the most popular model of intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting has become so trendy that it's this every day everybody does it. It's a, oh, I don't eat till two every day. You know, that's mm. It's just, it works for my lifestyle. Like, that's fine if it works for you. I get it. But that's not how I like to coach to it. If I in, introduce somebody who is uh, originally their goal is to be weight is weight loss, one, I won't teach them at the beginning how to, to do it. I first want to introduce all the good foods. I first want to build up their metabolism to where they're eating more calories and more food than they ever had before. And then when I introduce fasting, I want to do it like one day. Mm-hmm. It's one day and it's like intermittently. And I'll say, hey, this 
Thursday or whatever coming up, you know, we're not going to eat all day long. It's an all day fast and it's not a, a window fasting and it's not something I want them to do every day. It's just, I want to be able to show them they can have this and see how you, and then also talk mm-hmm. to them about how they well, feel. Yeah, the, the best health effects that come from fasting actually happen after 24, 48, 72 hours. It's mm-hmm. the long fast and even longer. There's, there's long fast that they've studied that show tremendous uh, health benefits. The health benefits you get from not eating 12 hours a day every single day are not the same. And a lot of these studies show that. There's, there's some benefits for some people, but I will say this. Some people experience hormonal issues if they consistently and constantly fast every single day. You see testosterone lower in men. You see these progesterone, estrogen imbalances in women. Women tend to be much more sensitive to consistent, you know, frequent uh, type of fasting. It's the infrequent longer fast that I found have the best benefit and the science supports it. So what I like to do is I like to a couple times a year or a few times a year, I'll do a 72 hour fast. And that's where you get the anti-cancer benefits, the anti-inflammatory benefits. I get to dis- detach from food. So I get to practice the the ancient spiritual practice of detachment um, when it comes to food for 72 hours. That's where I see some of the benefits. But before you even look at fasting, there's so many other things you can tackle before you go there. Like you need to learn how to just eat better in general, uh, learn how to eat your, you know, more balanced macros, not overeat, pick better foods, you know, those kinds of things before you go into not eating at all for, you know, for, for your health. Next question is from Danny Burdick. If all other attempts to aid in better sleep result in no luck, is melatonin a safe supplement to cycle on and off? So, so let's start with the all other attempts I know. part. What is that? Yeah. I wish I would have got a list. There's If oh. you're not able to sleep, okay, because sleep is, is fundamental. It's a fundamental. You have to sleep. Um, in fact, lack of sleep can actually lead to death. There have been studies. Uh, that there's just really terrible studies that were done a long time ago where they would actually prevent Keep people from sleeping. Yes. And uh, people Messed went up. mad. They went crazy. Um, it, it can actually kill you. Uh, so you ha- your body has to sleep. If you're having issues sleeping, something is wrong, either physiologically or uh, what's common is psychologically. You know, there's something going on mentally there. Um, so examine all of those things. So if, you, if you're like, okay, well, you know, I turn off my lights a couple hours before bed. I'm not on my electronics. Uh, I'm not eating food too soon, you know, before bed. I'm not taking any stimulants. That's a big one. People are like, I can't sleep and I'm doing all these different things. I'm like, well, do you have caffeine? Well, yes, I do. Okay, so. Are you getting adequate movement throughout the day? Yeah. Are you getting sunlight during the day? Because sunlight during the day actually helps set your circadian rhythm so you can sleep right. at night. Are you having any stimulants at all? Believe it or not, to people who are who have sleep issues, as little as 20 to 50 milligrams of caffeine anytime during the day, even if it's first thing in the morning, will affect their sleep. So have look you, at- Have you tested cortisol and hormonal yeah, look levels? Look at all t- those There's things. a lot of things. Melatonin could- is very, very much on the bottom of this yeah, list. Yeah, look at all those things. Now, in terms of melatonin being safe, well, first off, it's very safe. It's a non-toxic hormone that you can use. Um, but if you use it for relatively long period of time, you're probably going to suppress your own body's melatonin production. So like other hormones, there's a, a feedback loop. So if, you know, if I'm on testosterone, um, if I take testosterone, then my body will stop producing testosterone. If I'm taking melatonin all the time, my body may stop producing or lower its production of melatonin. Now I'm in a bad position. Now if I go off, my sleep was worse than it was before, and I have to go through that period of you know, letting my body come back to normal. Studies show that a very low dose of melatonin is best. So when you go to the store and you see one milligram, two milligram, three milligrams of testosterone, even one milligram is too much. Studies show that it's about a quarter to half a milligram uh, of of melatonin uh, seems to be best um, for people who use it. And it probably should be used intermittently. Um, It also, uh, in some people, if if they don't take a time-release version, They'll find themselves waking up in the middle of the night. So they'll take it before they go to bed, helps them go to sleep. That's what I used to do to me. And then yeah. wake it would, up when it, it, would, when it, it wears it off. Would, it would knock me out and I'd sleep hard for like a few hours, but then I'd wake up and then I couldn't go back to sleep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So time release, probably better um, because it's slowly dripping, but it doesn't really it doesn't really mimic how your body releases melatonin. Your body doesn't really release melatonin that way. So it's like a Band-Aid. I like using it for travel. So if you're traveling somewhere where there's a three, four hour difference, 
it can help set your circadian rhythm, but it's still not as good as like as the, as changing how you eat and getting sunlight. Like if you travel somewhere, yeah, don't eat when it's dark in the place you're traveling to because your your organs, your internal organs, including your stomach, has like a circadian rhythm. Get sunlight when the sun is out. Make sure it's dark when it's dark to the place that you're traveling to. But yeah, there's a lot of things you need you you got. And if if you're doing if you think you're doing everything and it's still not working, I would see a a therapist because. There's a lot that goes on in your mind that will affect your sleep. About the only thing, one of the only things that'll keep me up at night more than anything else is worry. Oh, anxiety. Right. Oh yeah. That's oh, yeah. I have a I have a, a client of mine that I talk to on a regular basis. She struggles with sleep big time. And, you know, we, she's addressing a lot of the other stuff, the nutrition, everything that Sal just named. But the biggest thing that I know she's got, she's got a lot of anxiety and stress. And like that's enough mm-hmm. to throw it Super off. So uh, it's it's definitely something else like you, you nobody should have to take melatonin to to get to sleep yeah. can it be used as a tool yeah i think absolutely i think it's totally safe to be used as a tool but w- at what point does and I'm, I'm, i asked this question about anything we were having an off-air conversation about this we were talking about drugs caffeine marijuana like everything like and i've just i never want to be dependent on anything like when does something go from a tool to being you becoming dependent on it like mm-hmm. what's that point like you have to be honest with yourself if you're taking melatonin every single night, is it really a tool anymore, or is it something that you've become dependent on as something to as an aid to get you to sleep, and you require that? Like, mm-hmm. and personally, I no matter what, all the things, and I openly talk about all the different stuff that I use. I'm always very c- careful of you know how often or how consistent I'm using anything, and if I'm having to use something that consistently, then I feel like there's a deeper issue that I need to address. Yeah, right. here's here's the the, the top. There's also apnea too. Yeah, you're, that's a good which, point. Which is like, I mean, this is something that a couple of my clients, my family, had to go through this process of like going getting sleep tested. That's why you know mentioning that's good because too you know, you don't know like unless your partner like knows exactly that you're like a back sleeper and they can, they can hear this. Like there's moments where you wake yourself up and you're like choking on your own air. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to tell like that you have it. So it's good to have like, no, a that's test. a good point. See a sleep specialist because they'll, what they'll do is they'll monitor you for a night or two and then they'll be able to, if it is sleep apnea, it's a game changer. Yeah. I mean, you wear one of those, uh, what are they called? Uh, uh, like, CPAP. CPAP yeah. machine. Um, the change in your sleep quality. I mean, I have a family member who, you know, she uses a CPAP machine and she's like, I can't believe, I didn't realize how bad it was Mm -hmm. because I woke up for the first time feeling rested and I didn't even know what it felt like to feel fully rested, Mm -hmm. um, since using this thing. Here's a few things that you can do that are, that'll make a huge impact. Uh, get activity daily. Um, don't use any, any stimulants whatsoever, including mild stimulants like chocolate. Avoid all stimulants completely. Get sunshine when the sun is out. So when the sun is out, go outside. It sets your your circadian rhythm. It really makes a big difference. Um, turn off, turn down, or turn off your lights and go by candlelight, or you wear blue blockers about two hours uh, before bed, and don't eat anything about uh, a few hours before going to bed. And then make sure your room is cool. Make sure everything is cool in your room. So either use AC or use a product like the chili pad or Uller on your bed that keeps your temperature of the bed um, a nice, cool uh, temperature. Those things right there can help a lot of people. Massive difference. And then if you're, if you're past that point, I'd say see a, a sleep specialist. Um, uh, but the last option is to take, and I'm not knocking, you know, taking sleep aids or melatonin because at the end of the day, getting some sleep is definitely better than getting no sleep. Right. Um, so I'm not knocking it, but if, if you're not able to sleep, there's probably a reason why. Next question is from Jim Mendoza. What would you, each of you say is the it factor to be a personal trainer? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'll go ahead and take this one since I'm the only one of us that has this. <laughs> you got the it. <laughs> He's got the look. <laughs> He's got the look. You know, when I think of the it factor, I'm thinking of the one thing that will – you know, most guarantee, not, there's nothing that'll guarantee success. Okay. But the one characteristic that will most likely guarantee success. Yeah. Cause person. I think when I look at all the trainers that work for me, th- there's like, there's like four or five like attributes that I think that contribute to like a really good personal trainer. And I've had a range of like some of them having none of the other four, lots of one, a mix of all of them. So there's lots of things that make up. Oh, yeah. Well, if you look at like, if you use, for example, if you compare me and Justin um, as, as two trainers, both 
Uh, different but equally handsome. Very, yeah. <laughs> both yeah. very different and just above average. But both very successful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Way both, above average. Come both on. both very successful as personal trainers. Both of us have had clients that were with us for years and years and years. But we're both very very different. Um, but there is one thing that we have in common, and there's and and this is the one thing that I think is the it factor, <clears throat> likability. Um, you can be charismatic, you could be quiet, you could be extroverted, you could be introverted, you could be knowledgeable, you could be a beginner, you could be a trainer that's great with correctional exercise or athletic performance. It's the likability. Are you somebody that someone looks forward to meeting mm -hmm. an hour, you know, two days a week or three days a week for years? If you're likable, then the odds that you'll be successful are much higher. I can't right. think if of anything else. If your else. friends don't like you, you're not going to do very yeah, well. I can't think training. of I can't think of anything else that would be. This is a very social uh, type of a job. I, yeah. I I could make a case um, for communication because uh, you you could be you you don't need to be the smartest trainer in in the room, but if you do a good job of communicating the information that they need really well, that's pretty close to the it factor for me too. Because I feel like. Some of the best trainers aren't, aren't even the ones that are uh, the most well-read or the smartest trainers out there, no. but they have the ability to go, a client has a problem, right? Like, And this was me. This is definitely part of my journey as a trainer. Like, I didn't have this major educational background. I didn't have a ton of certifications when I first started. You know, I was just up and coming and I would run into an issue. A client would have something that I'd never done, dealt with before. And I would say, you know, I don't know, but let me find out for you and I'll get back to you. And then I would go home and then that's what would cause me to start reading and mm -hmm. learning. And then I would be able, and what I could do really well is I could read a bunch of dry material and get the gist of what I needed to do for that person. And then I'd be able to come back and communicate that information. Yeah, and that, then, that's what would make you an effective trainer. That's for sure. Right. Definitely what would make you an effective trainer is being able to communicate. Because at the end of the day, your goal is to get the client to change uh, behaviors and the only way to do that is to be able to communicate your ideas uh, well enough to where they want to really. But you're adopt right. Them. If you if you're not likable, no one's showing yeah. up. Yeah. No, you have to be. <laughs> you know, you got to relate to them. You got to be able to relay this this information and communicate it in a way where they're actually going to be able to absorb it. Like you can't just just hammer them with information that you know they're not going to apply. It has to be. It has to make sense to them. Yeah. Well, think about it this way. Like here's a per. I mean. I had clients that were with me for 10 plus years, okay, that would see me for two hours every single week for 10 years. That's two uninterrupted, one on one, you and I hanging out, working out, whatever, two hours a week for 10 years. They would spend more, more concentrated quality time with me than most of their friends and family, if you think about it, if you really think about it. Now, imagine if you're the client. Who would you want to spend that much one-on-one, -on -one, no one else, just undivided attention time with for 10 years? You better fucking, you're going to want to like the shit out of them. I don't care how good of a workout you're getting or how great the exercise or even how great your results are. Yeah. If they're not super likable, you're not showing up for 10 years. It just ain't happening. You're going to be like, oh man, I don't want to, I mean, it's a good workout and everything, but fuck, you know, mm. it's kind of boring or the guy is not, you know, they're not cool or I don't want to hang out with them or whatever. So it's, it's like ability. I could tell, look, when I used to interview, I could pick out, this is funny now, when I would, when I would hire my staff, I, there were certain qualities I would look for that would you know, all but guarantee the success of that person. And the one thing, because I worked in a gym, and this is true for every, almost everybody in the gym, except for people that didn't have to work with people too much, too much, like if you're cleaning my gym or whatever, but if you're my front desk, if you're my salesperson, and especially if you're a trainer, when I'm interviewing you and I'm asking you questions, the number one thing I'm paying attention to is, do I like this person? Mm -hmm. Does this person seem like a likable person? Because when I would hire a very likable person, I knew that I could teach them all the other shit. Mm -hmm. But when they were likable, I was like, man, people are going to want to buy memberships from you. They're going to want to train with you. They're going to want to show up. If they check into the gym and you're a likable front desk person, they're going to love checking in. Uh, that was always the number one. It's, it's number true because when I look back at all the all the trainers that I trained too, the more likable you were too, the the more often you were the more successful trainer mm -hmm. too. Not just if you would be successful, but if you were really well liked, where your peers liked you, the people. That's that, what I mean. If right. everybody liked you, like yep. you know, you did really well. Yeah, yeah. and I, I, would, I think I, that's a recipe for success in life. Totally, much. <laughs> totally. Say, I don't think it's just personal. Some people training. miss that. Yeah. Yeah, totally, that's, that's unfortunate. Now, how do you? Now, here's a question: How are you? How do you become a likable? Yeah, that's person. A good, that's a real. That's a. I think that's a, a good good question to ask because 
you know, there's certain things that um, you see these type of people do, like behaviors that other people knew. Like a, a simple behavior that uh, likable people do is they smile when mm-hmm. when the people talk to them. They look engaged with the conversation, like genuinely engaged in the conversation, like and interested in what you have to say. I'm not looking at my phone mm-hmm. or looking off. I don't have like a weird look on my face. So I think being approachable and being interested and I think that's where I kind of lucked out as a as a young trainer was I was just a curious kid as it was. Um, I smiled a lot. I was pretty happy. And, you know, if somebody was giving me their attention and talking, I was mm-hmm. interested. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. I mean, listening is a good one. Uh, being empathetic. Actually, and I'm talking just specifically as a personal trainer because there's things that make you likable just as a human being. But as a personal trainer, do you do the does the client actually feel like you care? Like this person, yeah. like my trainer actually cares about me. Like that's a that's like when your doctor, you know, when you go to your doctor, you ever have a doctor where you feel like, man, this doctor really gives a shit about me. That makes them likable as a practitioner. It's it's hilarious because I used to make fun of these life coaches, you know, in quotations. I was like, what is a life coach? You know, like what are you teaching them? You know, like that's going <laughs> to impact them so much. It's going to transform their life. <laughs> Uh, but that's like what we do the entire time we're training them. We're just oh, yeah. talking about their life and they're relaying, you know, everything that's happened, their feelings, like working through all this stuff as they're working on self improvement. And it's having somebody there to communicate with along that journey is so valuable to them. Yep. And the reason why I wanted to say I, I want to you know, hammer this home is because I've had trainers that were very charismatic. Um, charisma is different. Uh, charisma is, you know, we all know what charisma looks like. Then I've had trainers and, and staff that were not nearly as charismatic, but also extremely likable. And they were all very successful as long as they applied all the other things to like, you know, being hard workers and constantly trying to grow. Yeah. But that's it, man. If I had to list one thing right there and I'll tell you what, remove that you could have all the other attributes. You could oh, be how many how many trainers did you have? How many PhDs and mm-hmm. masters and bachelor degrees did you have that work for you that were just not like nobody liked them. Yep. And they yep. sucked. And they were terrible. Nobody's gonna hire you yeah. at all. You're not a robot. And your peers don't help you. You know what I'm saying? And then and then personal training is one of those businesses too where yeah. you want to be liked by your peers because there's a lot to learn from everybody that you're working with inside of a facility, especially if you're working in a gym where there's multiple trainers. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be the guy or the girl that nobody else likes to be around. It's funny, too, right. because uh, Jordan Peterson talks about um, like raising kids, and one of the things he says, which I thought was absolutely brilliant, is one of your jobs as a parent is to make sure that your, your child is liked by other kids. Because if they learn that skill as a child, that they're likable, the odds of success in life are through the roof. If the reverse happens, the odds of uh, having uh, you know a bad life are much higher. So oh, likeability is an important factor. Mm. Um, and with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. They're all absolutely free. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram. Adam at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find Likeable Sal at Mind Pump Sal.